What's up folks, Mike here at Well In Watches and welcome to the video. This is the uh, third video in the series where we're taking a look at how to service a mechanical watch. Uh, there are two previous videos in this series and in the first video we go over how to uncase the movement and remove the dial and hands. And uh, in the second video we take a look at how to disassemble the movement in preparation for cleaning. So in this third video we're going to be going over the uh, reassembly and lubrication uh, of the movement. Now just a point of note, I've already prepared the mainspring and assembled the mainspring assembly um, ahead of time and I've also pre-lubricated the balance uh, capsules ahead of time uh, to make this video uh, smoother and uh, not quite so long. But I will be touching on these two aspects of, um, of watch servicing in another video at some point in the future because I believe they deserve a little bit more attention but for the purpose of this video uh, the mainspring and the balance have already been uh, prepared. So first things first we're going to start off by making sure that we're wearing finger cots because we don't want to transfer any oil or grease from our hands uh, onto the movement. And I'm going to see if we can zoom in so you can get a better view. And I apologise in advance if my head uh, should get in the way, but there are some tiny pivots here and I need to make sure that uh, they get in the right places. And I also apologise in advance if there's any break in the video. Uh, unfortunately, uh, my camera only likes to record for 15 minutes at a time, so sometimes the two videos linking up isn't entirely smooth, but that shouldn't be too much of a problem uh, for you guys out there. Right, so we have the main plate and this is all bare, ready to go. Now the way I like to assemble it is just the way that I like to assemble it. The technical sheets or other people may assemble this movement differently uh, to each their own, as I would say, and the way that I assemble it is the way that I choose to assemble it. But there is more than one way to assemble this movement, so don't take this way as the only way. There are other methods. So where I like to start is uh, with the train wheels. So we've got the center wheel, fourth wheel, third wheel and the escape wheel and we're also going to need the uh, train bridge and the train bridge screws so what we're going to do is we're going to place the, the train wheels back into the plate and then we're going to fit the train train bridge uh, uh, back in place now it's worth taking your time at this stage um, not to break any pivots on the train wheels so take your time don't rush it because the, the tiny pivots on these wheels can break very easily. So there's the escape wheel. Uh, now we have the fourth wheel with the extended pinion. I'm not sure if you're gonna really see that there. When you're placing the fourth wheel in, if it has an extended pinion, is again, take your time and put it in as straight as possible to prevent damaging the pinion. So there we go, that's the fourth wheel. And then the third wheel. And finally the center wheel. So the train wheels are in place now. We can now replace the bridge. And this is where you really want to take care. So you're gonna see where that all lines up. And you only need to get it in rough position first and of course because it's on video it doesn't want to Play nicely. So once you've got the plate in rough position, you're going to want to make sure that the pinions are all in the jewels. So don't go straight in for the fit the screws, hammer it down and hope for the best. You've got to make sure that all the pinions uh, are in position before you can screw it down. So we're going to take a piece of pegwood and we're going to apply some light pressure to the upper plate. And we're going to make sure that the, uh, the pinions are in position. So I'm going to need to get my head in here a little bit. I don't think it's sitting right on this side.
So the pinions are in the top there now. It doesn't help that the movement is moving around inside the holder. So the movement, the, uh, the train wheel pinions are now coming through the top jewels and the bottom jewels. And if we move the center wheel, you can probably just see that the, uh, the train wheels are moving nice and smoothly. So now that we know that the plate is in place, we can put the screws uh, in place whilst maintaining a light pressure on the, uh, the bridge. And what we're going to do is we're going to tighten the screws down, but we're not going to tighten them fully. We're going to do it until they just start to grip. Again, maintaining a light pressure with the pegwood. And then you're going to check that uh, the pinions are all in the correct position and that the wheels are moving sm moving smoothly. So it seems fair to say that the, uh, the pinions are all in position but you can always double check with the loop. Yeah, and all the pinions are in place so now we can tighten that down a little bit more. And we know that the wheels are nice and safe and in their positions. Hope that's kept that in shot. Right, so the next part that uh, we need to replace is the setting lever bolt, which goes in uh, this position here. Because we will be fitting uh, the mainspring and the mainspring bridge. So you've got to remember to put this in position first and not after, otherwise you'll have to take everything off and start again. So we've got the mainspring uh, prepared, the mainspring bridge or barrel bridge, and the barrel bridge screws. There's the third one, there it is. So what we're going to do is we're going to give a little bit of light lubrication to the barrel arbor. Make sure there's no dirt stuck in the teeth of the mainspring. So with the mainspring here, I want to make sure that there's nothing stuck in these outer teeth uh, because if there, if there is any debris that manages to get its way stuck in these teeth, it'll certainly get stuck on the center wheel and you won't get anything out of the movement once it's uh, fully assembled. So with the mainspring arbor, uh, which is this part here, you want to use a very slight touch of uh, oil on this side and also on this side of the mainspring but again in the future videos I'll be going over the exact locations of the lubrication. So we're going to take our oiler and our lubrication and again on this side And we're going to place the mainspring and barrel uh, in the plate. So that's in there. And then we're going to fit the, the barrel bridge and again take your time with positioning this using the pegwood. Make sure everything's aligned so the center wheels are aligned there. So the bridge is pretty much in place. So we're going to fit the screws. Go round each screw and um, see if I can keep this in shot. Go round each screw and gently tighten them down. Don't go full bore again. Don't tighten them down fully. Check that everything is running smooth. You can gently move the, the mainspring barrel there and everything's in there nice and snug so we can tuck those screws down. And get them in position. So 
So all the wheels are free to move and that's something that you have to check regularly uh, as you're assembling the movement that make sure all the wheels uh, are able to move freely before tightening down any screws. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to check the uh, click. Sorry if it goes out of camera. There's the click screw. And the click spring. I'm going to add a touch of lubrication for the click and the spring before we put it back in position. So there we go. And then we can refit the click screw. One of the other videos I'll probably likely make in the future as well is how to uh, use screwdrivers correctly, um, which is something that a lot of people don't go over. So there we go, and we can check that the click is fine. I have no idea what that was. So now we're going to fit the crown wheel and ratchet wheel. And also the uh, the crown wheel core, which if you watch the second video you'll know about the, uh, the crown wheel core, which is this uh, small little uh, shim. Put it on there, you'll probably be able to see it. So again, we're going to need to lubricate the crown wheel post on the inside. Fit the sh uh, shim in position. Now some of the lubrication that I'm doing here is quite crude <laughs> because it's quite difficult to do a video uh, with your head at a distance away from uh, the movement. But again, in later videos, I'm going to show you how all the correct lubrication is done and the level of precision uh, that is required. So the crown wheel is an opposite thread, so we've got to remember that and use the larger driver so as not to damage the, uh, the screw. And before we fit the ratchet wheel, we're going to check that the crown wheel can move smoothly and there's no problem there. So now we can fit the ratchet wheel. And the ratchet wheel screw. And there is pretty much the main bulk of the movement uh, reassembled. If we put a screwdriver in here, we apply some gentle pressure to the mainspring. We can see all the train wheels are moving, the crown wheel is moving, the click is clicking. And everything is uh, good on that side. And we've, um, we've still not lubricated the train jewels yet. We can do them uh, almost last thing. So we're going to take the movement out of the holder and we're going to drop the pad because it's on video, of course. So now what we can do is we can flip the uh, movement over and we can uh, refit the keyless and motion works. So we can prepare all the parts uh, for that. So we have the cannon pinion, the yoke, yoke spring, uh, the minute wheel, uh, the setting lever, setting lever spring, clutch wheel, oh, actually we don't need the hour wheel just yet. Where's the, yeah, there's the clutch wheel and the other setting wheel. So again, how I would like to prepare that 
Where I like to start, and others may differ, is I like to pre-lubricate the centre wheel arbor here at the top ready for the cannon pinion. And we're going to use a bit of 9501 grease here on the, uh, the centre wheel arbor. And uh, I like to fit the cannon pinion uh, first rather than uh, later. Uh, that way you're reducing the risk of damaging the teeth on the minute wheel. So the cannon pinion goes on. And what we're going to do next is we're going to pre-lubricate the winding pinion and the clutch wheel. Again we're going to use a bit of 9501 uh, grease. which I'm doing rather crudely from a distance, but you'll get the general idea. So that's those two parts lubricated, and what we can do is we can slip in the winding pinion. That will fall into place, give it a little jiggle. That's not a technical term, jiggling, but uh, give it a jiggle. Next we're going to drop the clutch wheel in there. Then we're going to find the stem and we're going to lubricate the stem. Again you can use a, a thick oil, something like a D5, Mobius D5. fit the stem in position like so and then we like to add just a touch of uh, 9501 here for the setting lever use the fine tweezers make things easier not harder And we're going to position the setting lever just on top of the setting lever bolt there. And what you're going to do with your fingers, oh my loop's just falling down, uh, is you're going to hold the setting lever in position as you tighten the setting lever bolt on the other side. So if you put your finger on the setting lever, turn the movement to the side and we're just putting a small screwdriver uh, into the setting lever bolt on this side, which is kind of hard to see. So what you want to do first is you want to reverse the driver in the opposite direction to what you would do when tightening and this helps the thread get into the setting lever. So we go back and then we go forward. So it's not quite in there. There we go, I heard it click. So now we can tighten that down like so. So now we have the stem in position and we can carry on by fitting the remaining parts. So using something like a D5 we can pre-lubricate the post for the minute wheel and the, uh, the setting wheels. And also at this stage, uh, before we cover it up, we also need to lubricate the uh, jewel hole here underneath the where the minute wheel will be situated. We'll put on the loop for this. And when you're lubricating train wheels, um, it varies from movement to movement, but generally you can get away with using uh, Mobius 9010 for most of the train wheels. But if you want to be sure of what lubrication you're using on each and every movement, then you should, of course, um, try to look up the manufacturer's uh, tech sheets, and that will tell you exactly what lubrication it requires for each. Uh, but if you don't have uh, access to all the different types of lubrication, uh, but you do have or can get hold of uh, Mobius 9010, uh, then that's generally a pretty good lubrication to use for almost any of the train wheels. 
Uh, the only exception will probably be the centre wheel, uh, because it's larger, uh, you'll need a, a, more, a thicker uh, oil, something like D5 for the centre wheel, but uh, we're going to touch on all of these aspects in other videos, because there's uh, lots to go over. So we can fit the minute wheel, and both the setting wheels. They're in position. And then what we're going to do is we add a slight touch of lubrication for the yoke post. And there's a little touch there on top that we don't need. Oh, dropped it again. get it in the right orientation see if we're still in shot so this is the yoke we're going to fit the yoke in here and uh, the yoke arm here sl slots into the uh, clutch wheel and then we're going to add a touch of lubrication to the end of the yoke where it engages the uh, the setting lever and any of this excess uh, lubrication can be wiped away with Rodico at the end. So now that's in position we're going to need the, uh, the pegwood because we're going to refit the yoke spring. So once you've got the yoke spring in position against the uh, back part of the plate you can hold it in position with some pegwood and then slowly increase the tension it slips into position like so. Keep the pegwood there. I'm going to add a teeny touch of D5 lubrication there. Make sure that lubrication's in there. And then last but not least, we're going to fit the setting lever spring. We're going to get that in the uh, correct orientation. Like so. And as we fit the, uh, the screw, we're not going to tighten the screw down fully. We're going to tighten the screw down so it just about snugs the top of the setting lever. And then we're going to add some 9501 lubrication here in the setting lever. And then we're going to pull back on this lever until it snaps into position here. And then we can tighten it down. And then you just need to go over with your Rodico, wipe off any excess lubrication, like so. And that is the the keyless side done. So we can set it. We can wind it. So that's the keyless and motion work. As you can see, you wind it and the, uh, the movement turns over.